มวยมันพันเอ็กซ์ตรีมมวยมันพันเอ็กซ์ตรีมสวัสดีครับก็ต้อนรับทุกท่านเข้าสู่รายการ f a t e x Fight มวยมันพันเอ็กซ์ตรีมพบกันทุกวันเสาร์ตั้งแต่เวลา10บโงเช้าถึงเที่ยงวันทางช่อง7 h อครับวันนี้นะครับท่านผู้ชมเรามีทั้งหมด7คู่ที่จะขึ้นมาชกบนเวทีนี้ครับโดยที่6คู่แรกจัดอยู่ในมวยรอบของเราครับเป็นรอบตัดเชือกของ f a t e x Fight Road to One Thailand เรามีทั้งหมด3รุ่นด้วยกันครับของผู้หญิง53กิโลกรัมและของผู้ชายครับ58และ68กิโลกรัมผู้ชนะในแต่ละรุ่นจะได้มีโอกาสขึ้นชกในรายการวันซึ่งแน่นอนครับเป็นความฝันของนักมวยที่มีโอกาสขึ้นชกในรายการวันครับ Ladies and gentlemen we have a total of seven bouts lined up for you today the first six of the semi-finals of our tournament Fairtex Fight Road to One Thailand we have three categories In the women's 53 kilograms and the men's 58 and 68 kilograms, the winner of each category will get an opportunity to fight in one championship. For those of you who'd like to listen to commentary in English, you can do so by changing the language on your remote on Channel 7 HD or tune into our YouTube channel at Fairtex Fight. สำหรับท่านไหนที่อยากจะชมออนไลน์ครับเรามีของ Fairtex Fight และ t e r o Digital ทาง YouTube, Facebook และ TikTok ครับเอาละครับเราจะพักกันสักครู่กลับมากับคู่เปิดเวทีครับจัดอยู่ในมวยรอบของเราครับของผู้ชายครับยอดถลงพบกับเพชรเก้าแสน We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with our opening bout in the semi-finals for the men's 58 kilograms Don't go anywhere
สนุนโดยเครื่องดื่มโสมโอทีดีเพื่อมีสิงแอลคาเนตีนและโสมสกัดครับครับวันนี้พี่เซตุกป้าเนี่ยครับเป็นรอบตัดเชือกของโทนเมนต์โรจูวันไทยแลนด์ซึ่งคู่แรกในวันนี้ครับจัดอยู่ในรุ่น58กิโลกรัม Let's bring out the fighter in the black corner ยศถนองนพเดชขุนยิมอ n t o the ring now we have Yao t e n o n g n o p a d e t Kim, the 31-year-old stands at 168 centimeters, 80 bouts to his record, 53 wins, 22 losses, and five draws. So this for the Road to One series season two, the winner of the tournament goes on to get a hefty contract worth 100,000 US dollars. 2-1 championship. So y o t a n o n g a seasoned veteran. This is a semifinals. I've actually cornered against y o t a n o n g before. He fought Jaleel Barnes maybe two years ago. Jaleel, uh, up and coming star, now based out Phuket Fight Club. A uh, very very good American athlete that has actually fought on one Lumpini. I think once before. So y a t a n o n g just final prayers before going into battle, and we turn it over to our MC Mark Abbott. And in the red corner, let's bring out p e t k a u s a n s i t n a k a Coming into the red corner is a p e t k a l s a n s i t n a k a r standing at 167 centimeters with a fight record of 41 fights, 25 wins, and 16 losses. So a little bit shorter than his opponent, y o t a n o n g but only by one centimeter, so not a huge difference. However, he's got a bit of a stockier frame than y o t a n o n g so it'll be interesting to see what strategy he brings into this fight. Standing 170 centimeters tall, m a j a k p r a t e t h a i from Thailand. This is y o t a l o n g Nopadet s i t k u n y i m And his opponent fighting in the right corner. n a m n a k 58 kilogram, s u n g 167. Weighing in at 58 kilogram, s standing 167 centimeters tall. มาจากประเทศไทย Also from Thailand This is p e t k a u s e n s i t n a k a And your 
ฟรีจาสิตรีอนุกูลตามสีลำ Here is a tale of the tip. Pei Kao San sit Naka versus Yao Chenong Nopadet sit Kun Kim. So a lot on the line here today. As Yao Chenong takes on Pei Kao San again. This is the semifinals of the Road to One season two. The first season. Was last year, and the winners. Round one. The winners of last year's tournament, Dead Doing Lex, Celeste Hansen, Dad Pupa, have gone on to have amazing careers at One Lumpini. And we see Pekau San coming in hard and heavy already. Love that kick into that pullback from Pat Kalsan. Trying to work the body there with that lead hook. And he's shifting his stances as well, Pat Kalsan. Yod Tanong has yet to really enter the fight yet. Just biding his time. Oh, beautiful rear knee there. Yeah. Really lifting those hands to drag down Pat Kalsan's head. With that sort of frame, the frame like Yod Tanong has, those sort of weapons are the best. It looks like a little bit of blood or a cut on Pet Kao San, and he's blinking. I think that cut right above the eye. Oh, and he looks—he's looking a bit wobbled here. It's definitely causing him some frustration there because I think it is in right in the eye there um, is obstructing his vision. When the blood runs into the eye, the doctor and referee are more likely to stop it because the athlete can't see. He's doing a good job of giving it back, though. Yeah, Yao Tanong picking up the pace here, really controlling, and the beautiful work with that glove into the face of Pet Kao San. You just see him gauging the distance there as he pushed the arms off of mm. Pet Kao San. Yeah, and you see Pet Kao San blinking. I think he's gonna. I wouldn't be surprised if this fight is called off early. He's having trouble just seeing and finding the range. Oh, beautiful rear oh. head of that body. And a strong hook afterwards. Nice stabbing knees there from Yeltanong. Yeah, these knee strikes up the middle do the most damage. Huge shots there from Pet Kao San. Throwing everything but the kitchen sink here this morning at Fairtex fight. Catching the teeth, replying with the rear punch. Yotunong using his teeth well. Not only as a defensive method, but offensive as well. Mm. It's a very underrated attack is the teeth. With a push kick. And Pat Kao San coming in with his bombing hand still. Tying up here in the clinch now. That is, end of round one. That is the end of round one. So a pretty action packed round already. Here at our first bout this morning at Fairtex Fight, Road to One Season Two. So we'll go and have a look at some of the replays in just a second. Beautiful stabbing knee. That was early on. Then I feel like that was a bit of a turning point for Yad Tanong. He started to come into the fight more. I think shortly after was cut Pet Kao San. Yeah, I definitely think that long knee was the game changer for that round. And the you can. You can see the cut is right on the inside of the eye of Pet Kao San. Steve Mack, our one of our corner men, is going to be doing some hard work in the corner. Oops. And so for those viewers at home who are wondering why Pet Kao San has shaved eyebrows and a shaved head, 
It's probably because he might have just come back from a temple. A lot of men in Thailand will do at least some time at the temple a way to make merit, even if it's just for a day. If a relative dies, they'll go to the temple to make merit or sometimes special occasions. So tying up into the clinch with Yotanong applying that D lock. He's fighting for position now. Bit of a stalemate there. And Yotanong getting his back, really showing dominance there. Oh, good stabbing knee there from Yotanong. Taking Pickhouse on to the canvas there. I feel like Pickhouse on might be running out of steam. Yeah, I think some of those knees in the first round has really taken the gas out of him. Still soldiering forward, though. This doesn't seem to have the same level of spice to him, though. He had some good punches there just a second ago. So it looked like it rocked the head back of Yotanong. Yotanong breathing very heavily now. Stabbing knees is really causing some damage. And those teeps, mm. as I was talking about before, using them offensively. Oh, good short elbows and a short hook there from Yot from Pekhausan. Yotanong's got to be careful applying that double long guard that he's doing. Oh, oh big elbow there again from Yotanong. Big slug fest here right now. <laughs> really, really swinging for the fences. Nice hand control there by Yotanong. You can see Pekiao San looking up at the clock there. Sometimes a sign of fatigue and survival mode. And last few seconds here of the second round. Yod Tanong sitting back a bit. Ooh, took a hard hook there. And immediately spitting out the gum shield there, Yod Tanong. Have to wonder what sort of condition he's in. Did a good job controlling Pet House on though. Go have a look at some of the replays. There's a big punches there from Pet House on as Yotanon catches the leg and comes back to his own. Ooh, big elbow to the back of the head there. And great news from Yotanong. Doing a good job of applying that palm over the face in the clinch as well, rubbing the cut, trying to cause discomfort to Pekau San. So yeah, you can see our cup man working very hard to mitigate some of that blood coming into Pekau San's eye there. I think he did a really good job going into the second round. The blood stopped flowing. Really good work from the come in because I was thinking it would be a huge problem going into the second. Hasn't been an issue yet. We'll see how we'll see how things turn out for this third and final round. So locking on into the clinch straight away now. Really picking up the pace. Starting off very strong here from both fighters into the third. And there we see Yotanong using that tape offensively as, again. Uh, Yotanong looking very spirited going into this final round. 
I would have to say he's ahead on points. I would agree with you there on my unofficial scorecard. Oh, big elbow there from Peckhouse arm on the inside. Oh, oh. taking him to the ground. And got a big roar of approval from his fan club in the corner as well. Applying that palm over the face that Yotanong has been doing so well the whole fight. Taking the back. Ooh, that's never a good look in the judges' eyes. As Matt often tells us that it doesn't necessarily score, but as a secondary criteria, it does play pretty well in the judges' eyes when you take the back of an opponent. So exchanging knees here. Oh, big elbow there from Pekalsan. Gautanon controlling in the clinch here. We're halfway through with this final round. I think Pekalsan needs to score a knockdown, something substantial here. Trying to step in with that lead elbow there from Pekalsan. I saw Gautanon eat that. And I feel like Yotanong came out a lot stronger and his energy level isn't as high, but he's doing a very good job controlling Pek Kausan. And again, just getting superior positions in the clinch. A good push kick there from Yotanong. And he's doing a good job of just looking stronger and having a stronger fat frame in this fight. Mm. Looking more confident. Big knees there from Yotanong. I feel like a lot of other athletes would have fallen from these knees. He's really looking for a knockdown, I think. We've got the dying seconds of the third and final round. So Yotanong sits on the back foot. Just taping away, taping away. Yotanong looking very, very confident that he took the win. We'll go to the judges' scorecard, but I think Yotanong probably took this one. Nice show of respect between the two as well. Here's the replays. Yotanong using the push kick just very, very adept in the clinch. Great controlling knees. Peck Kalsan with some short elbows, but that's not a ton of power. And another thing that I think he did really well was using that tape offensively in that fight. Just stabbing into the body of Ladies and gentlemen, after the completion of all three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored this bout 30-27. Sam to Yusuf Jet. Sam to Yusuf Jet. Let Sam to Yusuf Jet. For the winner, in the black corner, Yotanong Lopadet Sitkunye. Join us after the break with some more Muay Thai action in the other half of the semi-finals in the men's 58 kilogram category. Don't go anywhere.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Fairtex Fight. Moi Man Pan Extreme here at the world famous Lumbini Stadium. เมื่อสักครู่นี้นะครับยอดน้องชนะแล้วก็จะเข้าเข้ารอบต่อไปครับรอบชิงของมวยรอบเฟตเอ็กซ์ไฟท์ Road to One Thailand. ส่วนของคู่ต่อไปครับก็เป็นรอบตัดเชือกเช่นกันรุ่นเดียวกันนะครับ 58 กิโลกรัม. Let's bring out the fighter in the black corner. Gautam Pet Palapodi. Here we go with the next bout, the next semi-final. The winner of this one will go on to face Yautanong for the final. So walking into the ring, we have Gautam Pepala Podi. The 19-year-old stands at 165 centimeters, 53 bouts to his record, 32 wins, 19 losses, and two draws. So exciting days here at Fairtex Fight as we get the semifinals of the Road to One tournament underway. There's three weight classes this year. There's 58 kilos, 53 women's, and then 68 men. The winner will go on to a contract with one championship. And there you see Steve Mack, one of our come in, just applying the Vaseline. And of course, thank you to our sponsors, including you, the clothing manufacturer located down in Patia. And we turn it over to Mark Abbott. And in the right corner, let's bring out Gan Chai Jit Mung Non. Hailing from the famous Jipmungon gym over there in Nontaburi is Kanchai Jipmungon. Day is 22. Kanchai stands at 165 centimetres with a fight record of 60 fights, 40 wins, 19 losses, and one draw. So, of course, Jipmungon having a huge stable of famous fighters that have fought here at Lumpini Stadium. Of course, last night we saw Rotang, Rotang Jipmungon, also the likes of Pampayak, and a huge stable of fighters over there at Jipmungon. So very excited to see what Kanchai brings this morning. I remember his, these, the quarterfinals, he did very, very well. Super exciting fight. Love the Jip Mungnon athletes. Tend to have more of a stadium style. The gym located a little north of Bangkok, in Nantaburi. Very close to a stadium. I believe it's Obotor Stadium. This is a Muay Thai bout at 58 kilograms, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Nakmoy Nay Mumdam fighting in the black corner. Namnak 58 kilograms, sung Roy Hoksibha. Weighing in at 58 kilograms, standing 165 centimeters tall. Madak Pratai. From Thailand, this is Gautam Pet Palabodi! And his opponent, fighting in the red corner, Namnak 59 kilograms, sung 165. Weighing in at 59 kilograms, standing 165 centimeters tall. Madak Pratetai. Also from Thailand, this is Gan Chai Jit Munnan! And your referee, Jasip 3, Pichet Kahakasit.
Here is a tale of the deepest gun day. Tip Mong Nan takes us, takes on Gao Dam Pet Pala Bordi. And it's Southpaw versus Orthodox for this one. Gao Dam, the taller of the two, in the southpaw position. Big kick there from Kantrai. Ooh, beautiful left kick there from Gao Dam. Both fighters trying to set their own pace here early on in the first round. It's going to be a bit difficult for Gan Chai to make up that distance. He is the shorter of the two. And Joe, what do you think is going to be happening here in this first round? So Gan Chai is still moving forward. Oh, excellent attacks there from the red corner. And Gao Dam just sitting back a bit. Oh, beautiful southpaw kick there. Following up with that hard cross from the younger fighter. Beautiful high kick there from Kan Chai. Slapping on the arms of Kao Tam. Oh, beautiful kick to punch as well. Replying the, returning the favor there from Kao Tam. And you see here in the first round, they're just biding their time a little bit. Still feeling each other out. It's a bit more of a stadium-esque style from both fighters at the moment. I believe both of them will have had a decent amount of experience in the stadiums. The style of fighting in the traditional stadiums is a bit different. The athletes will sort of stand around a bit more. Beautiful kick to punch there from Kao Tam. Swing and a miss there from Kao Tam. And you can see there, Khan Chai continuing to kick really high and slap on the arms of Kao Tam. Take out the punching power of Kao Tam. Oh. And coming in with that short right hand again, Khan Chai. He's a dangerous man here, that 22-year-old fighter from Kipmoong Nan. Very calculated kick battle here in the first round. The referee wants to see a bit more action. And with these three-round fights, you can't afford to set a slow pace. Got to really, really push the pace in these three rounds. You don't have much time, only nine minutes. So, interesting to see if they pick up the pace in the second and third. And we go to the corner and we'll get to see some of the replays. I do feel that Gun Chai was the more active of the two in that first round. I think he probably took it on my unofficial scorecard. Yeah, I would agree with that. He's just edged it out with a bit more high volume. Some of those high kicks, I really do think they're going to take out some of the punching power of Kao Tam. Slapping onto the arms. A very good strategy there from the Jipmungon fighter. So there's DJ Sanook always bringing the fun vibes here to Lumpini Stadium on a Saturday morning here at Fairtex Fight. So what did you take away from that first round? I think that the athlete Pep Pala for the Kao Tam just needs to be a lot more active. He sat back a lot. Pretty normal southpaw draw, southpaw waiting. But we'd like to see him be more aggressive. You can see the referee. <laughs> Tell him to push the pace a bit more. Yeah, he's saying, a lot of times he's saying, which means to let your weapons out. 
to get going. Attack. Beautiful reply there from Kanchai Jipungon. Yeah, Rip. has a lot of power in that right kick. Short elbow there from Kanchai inside the clinch. As Kautam ties him up. Just trying to find the range there from Kanchai. Oh, he definitely found it there. But a good good defense there by Kautam. Now, Kautam is defending some of his kicks, but the blocks aren't 100%. Kanchai still moving and shifting Kautam. Breaking the frame a little bit too. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice reply with the hands there from Kanchai. Yeah, and you see that nice patient bobbing from Kanchai. This fantastic timing. Three kicks in a row there from the Jip Mwangnan athlete. Hat trick. So just edging forward. Looking for that kicking range from Kanchai. Oh. Reply from Kao Tam. Trying to take out the lead leg there from Kao Tam. Yeah, there the referee is saying, hey, this is round two. You have to get going. Wants to see more action. And again, these fighters are more used to a five round fight, so sometimes they'll be a bit slower letting letting their weapons fly. Ooh, doubling up there from Kautam. Oh, stepping elbow, looping around. Good stall there from Kantrai. He looks up at the clock. About 30 seconds to go into round two. When he kicks, he's got so much power behind that rear leg that he breaks the frame and the posture of Kautam. And that is one of the criteria for scoring as well. How you stand after an attack. So the judges will be keeping a close eye on that. And a little bit of goading there from Gunside to finish out the round. So we're going to have a look at some of the replays from that second round. Some nice replies there from Kanchai. And like you were saying, Joe, you can see the power in Gunchai's kicks. It just all balances Gautam all the time. Yeah, it really does break the frame and the posture of him. So I, I'm going to say on my unofficial scorecard that Gunchai took that round again, edging it out with those powerful kicks. Going into around third and final round now of our second bout this morning. Kautam Pet Palabordi taking on Kanchai Jipmungon, both athletes from Thailand. So this last round getting underway, very similar to the second. Kantai starting off fast and strong. Nice high guard there from Kantai. Oh, looking for that elbow. Just nearly slipped through the guard of Kautam there. He stepped in and shifted stance when he threw it. And Gunchai looking very, very confident as well. Kautam looking focused on the back foot there. Just trying to find his range and his timing to mitigate some of the power from Kanchai. Devastating power, that is, too. Oh. 
Beautiful catch to kick. Love a good kick battle. Nice. Beautiful kick. The block transition there as well. You can see every time that Kanchai kicks the corner of Kanchai, the guys from Jipmangon calling as he strikes. Very loud here this morning. <laughs> yeah, the crowd really getting behind these two fighters. A big support group for Kanchai from Jipmangon. Fighting his time here, looking for that kick. You can see him low it, loading up on it. Nice rear teep there from Kanchai. He's trying to pop that hand out to measure the distance. Oh, stepping in for that elbow. Oh, and landing on top there as well. And beautiful dive there from the referee. Edging forward. Oh, there it is. Kick to Bok. Cal Tom's having a hard, hard go this morning of trying to find where he can land an attack. Just can't try his defense is really on point as well. Oh, straight hand right through the guard. Last 15 seconds here. Again, Cal Tom just sitting back a lot. Nice little question mark kick over the top. You can see him just popping up that leg. Beautiful kick battle here this morning. Very nice display of kicking. Good sportsmanship afterwards and family all smiles and friends. Here's some of the replays. Count up with that left kick. But that power side of Gunta is so much more accurate, so much more developed, I would say. smile on the face of Gantai as we go to the judge's decision with our MC Mark Abbott. Ladies and gentlemen, after the completion of all three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored this bout 29-28. Yisip Gao, Yisip Bad. Yisip Gao, Yisip Bad. Let Yisip Gao, Yisip Bad. For the winner, in the red corner, Gantai Jit Mugnaw. ต้องประกาศด้วยนะครับว่ากันชัยจิตมงนท์ทำหนักๆไม่ผ่านนะครับเพราะฉะนั้นก้าวแต้มก็จะเข้ารอบต่อไปรอบชิงชนะและขอม
extreme. สนับสนุนโดยเวเบอร์ผลิตภัณฑ์ที่ช่างเชื่อใจเจ้าของบ้านเชื่อมั่นมวยมันพันเอ็กซ์ตรีมเฮียร์ดิไอคอนิกลุงบินีสเตเดียมวีฟนาวฮัดออฟเฟิร์สทูไฟท์โบ๊ทโกงเดอะดิสเซนส์
Weighing in at 53 kilograms, standing 156 centimeters tall. Majak Pratetai from Thailand. This is Nang Hong Liang Brasil. And your referee, Pando Ying Nicha Pon Yin Toti Kun. Here we go with the tail of the tape, Nong Hong Liang Presser versus Asia Seven Muay Thai Gym. This one, our first semi-final for the 53 kilo women's division. The referee there just finishing the protocol. Making sure all three judges ringside are paying attention. Azia coming in with a bit of a kickboxing esque rhythm there. Jumping up and down. Tends to be a bit more of a kickboxing style. And definitely the taller of the two, Azia. Nung Hong. Oh, cracking left here. Coming in more with that traditional stance. Wide feet, open guard. Stepping in. Just edging forward. Doubling up on the kick there. Low, high. Going right to left. Opening those hips up. Yeah, a little bit of frustration on the face of Azia as Nong Hong lands some of these solid kicks. She's definitely got power behind those kicks. Mm. You see she swings a whole hip into that left kick. She doesn't even switch it. Throws it up and swings a whole hip into it. Yeah, smile on the face of Nong Hong as well. One of the things Nung Hong really does well is steps across with her kick with the lead foot and then drives her hip through the whole kick. Why it's getting so much torque and power. Yeah, just circling around, trying to find her range to throw off her own attacks. But Definitely frustrated by the power of Nung Hong. Nung Hong just carefully hunting her down. Yeah, a real smile on the face of Nung Hong. I feel like it's because she's landing so many powerful shots. Asia is doing a good job, but it just doesn't seem like she has the same power level. Uh, especially that lead left of. Nung Hong. Oh, right kick there from Nung Hong. Threw everything into that one. Working the levels there as well. Some good, solid fundamental boxing there from Nung Hong. Up the top, down to the body, up to the top again. Beautiful left kick again. Cross block there from Nung Hong as Azia tried to throw the her lead left. There's the end of the first round of action. And Mateus Casarino in the corner of Azia will definitely give her a talking to. Be interesting to hear what he says. So we'll go and have a look at the replays. So here are some of those kicks that we were talking about. Just the absolute power and venom behind some of those kicks of Nung Hong. Throws her whole hip into it. You can see as she throws that left, she opens her whole hip up. It's really nice to see. And then steps out with her footwork. Some really good fundamentals there from Nung Hong. So what do you think Azia can do in the second round to mitigate some of that power, Matt? We could try and get Nung Hong into the clinch. You know, with a tall, lanky frame like Azia's, 
She might be able to really drive in the knees. Yeah, I think she'll want to have to put the pressure on and just walk her down instead of standing in that trading range with her. Because that's where Nung Hong wants her. Yeah, and Nung Hong has a very firm base. So what, even when the shots are coming in, they don't look as damaging because Nung Hong is just able to stand very firm. There we are into the clinch now. So we'll see how Asia handles this. A little bit of frustration in the clinch there as Nung Hong applied that palm over the face to disrupt the breathing of Asia. Asia, just a bit of nervous energy there as well. Oh, beautiful left kick there from Nung Hong. Well timed, very well timed. See, Asia trying to circle around. Nice tape there from Nung Hong using it offensively again. You can see Nung Hong slapping that left kick up onto the arms. It's often a strategy to take out the punching power of your opponent, make that arm tired. Especially the rear hand tends to be the power hand of people. Doubling up with that left kick. It's been working for Nung Hong all day here. You can see nothing but smiles on Nung Hong's face right here. She's looking very happy with her handiwork. Ooh, solid kick there from Asia though. And loading with some leather as well, the Italian athlete. Oh, nice rear kick there from Asia. And a sol solid right hand down the middle as well. Just try to find a rhythm. Nung Hong tapes off. Bit of nervous energy still. Trying to throw that net out. Ooh. Ferocious kick there from Nung Hong. Yeah, beautiful left kick from her. Nice turnover of the hip too. Not letting Azia fire off. Big solid right hand straight down the middle from Nung Hong as well. Well teep, well time teep. Nice little combination of kick. Azia just having a hard time to find a range there in that second round. And her timing. Nung Hong's experience really showing through in this fight. Go and have a look at the uh, action replays in just a second. Some of those ferocious left kicks there from Nung Hong. Catching the leg, replying with a right hand straight away. Tying up in the clinch and then that left Oh, that left kick again just finds us home every time. And you can see turning over the hip as soon as Asia, Asia caught the leg, turned the hip over so that Asia can't throw anything back. Pretty veteran technique, if I must say. So here we are for round three. Nung Hong taking on Asia from Italy. And there's that left kick, the, the story of the fight. It's a very common theme through this fight is that ferocious left kick of Nung Hong. A lot of power in the hips of Nung Hong. Just flicks it up there with ease. 
That kick to Teep. Beautiful work there by the tie. Oh, Azia giving it her own now with the rear. Bit of tip for tap here now. Oh, beautiful walking knee there from Nam Hong. Oh, speared it in. That's a such a look of confidence on the face of Nang Hong. Azia replies with that rear hand straight down the line through the guard of Nang Hong. Bang, bang, again that left kick all day. A very loud corner in uh, Nang Hong's corner there. So you're just waiting, waiting, waiting. Bang! Reply back again. Beautiful timing from the Thai athlete. A stiff jab there from Asia. Oh, going low, going high with that lead left kick again from Nung Hong. Ever dangerous. Eyes on her opponent, just waiting for Azia to unload with the hand so she can throw off that left kick. Oh, oh. Really heard the slap on that one. Oh, again, the left kick. Blasting it out again. You can see one of the things that Nung Hong does as she goes on the back foot is shift stances so she can load up on that left kick there's 20 seconds left here nice for your tape there from Nung Hong so 10 seconds to go oh, there's that left kick again and good sportsmanship between the two athletes. I think we'll see Nong Hong move on in the tournament. We'll go to this decision in just a moment. Definitely a good learning experience for Asia, though. There's that left kick from Nong Hong. That beautiful step in knee. Azia was more active in that final round. Stood her ground a bit more. Ladies and gentlemen, after the completion of all three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored this bout 30-27. Sam Tip Yusuf Jet. Sam Tip Yusuf Jet. Let Sam Tip Yusuf Jet. For the winner, in the red corner, Nam Hong Liam Prasa. Kong Fairtex fight road to one Thailand. Lao Khao Chia Chia with Kai. Nah, look. 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 Look.
welcome back to Fairtex Fight Boy Man Ban Extreme here at the legendary Lumpini Stadium. เมื่อสักครู่นี้นะครับนางหงชนะแล้วก็จะเข้ารอบชิงชนะเลิศของมวยรอบ Fairtex Fight Road to One Thailand แล้วเขาจะพบกับใครในรอบชิงชนะเลิศล่ะครับ Let's bring out the fighter in the black corner, Sheer Fairtex. So walking into the ring now, here, Cohen, here, Fairtex, a rising star at the Fairtex Training Center in Pattaya, Thailand. Here is 22 years old, stands at 158 centimeters. A relatively small career in Muay Thai, six bouts to a record, five wins, one loss, but a very substantial kickboxing career was on the Israeli kickboxing team for a number, number of years. Won gold in Birmingham at the World Games there, I think two years ago. And is going to be on the Israeli team for, I believe, it's a, if my game's coming up, there's some, or the World Combat Games in Dubai in a few months. Definitely done a very good job adjusting here from kickboxing to Muay Thai. We'll see how she plays out today. And in the red corner, let's bring out Ganjana Siri, Sidna Yok Wailampam. So here we are, coming into the red corner is Kanchana Siri Sitnayot Wailampam. At age 19, she stands at 161 centimetres with a fight record of 27 fights, 19 wins and 8 losses. So, a little bit more experienced than her opponent, Sher with about a 20 fight, fight difference. Often Thai athletes coming in with a lot more experience as they start younger than people from other countries tend to. A lot of us don't tend to find Muay Thai until our 20s. The, of course, the grassroots development out here in Thailand tends to start at the ages of five or six. And Thai fighters racking up fights every one to two weeks out in the countryside. So we'll throw it over to Mark Abbott. This is a Muay Thai bout at 53 kilograms, scheduled for three three minute rounds. Namuay Nay Mumdam fighting in the black corner. Namnak. 53 kilograms, 158. Weighing in at 53 kilograms, standing 158 centimeters tall. Matak Prahet Israel. From Israel, this is Sheer Fete. Fighting in the red corner. Namnak 53 kilograms, 168. Weighing in at 53 kilograms, standing 161 centimeters tall. Mata Pratetai from Thailand. This is Ganjana City, Sit Nayok Wailampam. And your referee, watch it up on Pratum Chai. Here is the tail of the tip, Kanchana Siri. Sign Sit Nayok Wai Lampam versus Sheer Fairtex, Sheer Cohen, Thailand versus Israel for this one at 53 kilos. You see a little bit of nervous energy in both athletes. Round one. Nice lead tape there by Sheer. A mm. couple of fast kicks there from the red corner. She picks up the tempo, yeah. pushing Kanchana Siri into the corner. 
I feel like that cross might have took something out, Kan Kanasiri. She just blinked for a moment, and turned her head slightly. Good solid left kick though. Ooh, hard punches from here. Kantana Siri does not like the hands of the Israeli athlete. And she's definitely got some power behind those hands here. Because you can see the look of frustration on Kanchana Siri's face. Yeah, I think that's why Kanchana Siri moved right into the clinch. Ooh, with a hard right hand. So I think that's what we'll probably see for the rest of this fight is Kanchana Siri trying to move into the clinch. Doesn't want to stand and trade. Oh, yeah, this leather really getting to Kentana Siri. See, uh, quite frustrated by that right hand of shears. Yeah, the Israeli athlete needs to figure out a way to land that right hand without getting swept up into the clinch. Oh, again, that right hand, two in a row. She doesn't want to be in that clinching range of Kanchana Siri. Nice right kick there from Sheer. Following up the big right hand. Straight into the sternum of Kanchana Siri. Just walking through a lot of the attacks of Kanchana Siri. Not really blocking that much. She just needs to be careful that some of the attacks of Kanchana Siri don't add up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, some of those kicks from Kanchana Siri, they start to add up. They could take the gas out of. Oh, oh, oh. I could have spoken too soon there. Looks like some of those straight hands from Cheer really rocked Kanchana Siri there for a moment. She's looking a little bit wobbly here too. Yeah, her guard just isn't quite the same. Her, there's not as much focus in her eyes. Nice catch to leg kick there from Cheer. Good work swinging those knees in. She want to dig them in straight up the middle though. Take out the gas of Kanchana Siri. Oh, loading up on that kick with Venom. So a very strong round there from Sheer, I thought. Frustrating her Thai opponent. Some of those solid concrete hands that she's got. Throwing them straight down the line. Frustrating Kanchana Siri. For some of the replays. Good right hand there from Sheer Cohen. Taking some hard kicks, but then dishing out the leather. Kanchana Siri trying to tie up she in that round to mitigate some of the powerful right hands. There's that flurry that really frustrated her over the top under. It was a nice lead uppercut. Thought I saw it's DJ Sanook always bringing the party to... Lumpini Stadium on a Saturday morning. So, what do you think? What do you think Kachana Siri will need to do? Mm. I think she'll need to clinch up with Sheer and probably try and deliver some elbows potentially. Here she's clinching up, but good stalling from Sheer to prevent any damage. And you see Sheer just coming in like a bullet. Nice defense there by Sheer. Ooh, jumping in with that lead left. That right hand just causes Kanchanasiri so many problems. And I think here, if she was a little bit more aggressive and just went after it with that, those hands could potentially end this fight early. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that if she just chases after with those hands because it is really causing Kanchana Siri a lot of frustration. Uh, oh, there, you see the, hog, yeah. the head wobble back. 
and she like moves to the side sometimes after that right cross. He's really worried about that right hand. Of, oh, big left hook there, really taking it. A lot of aggression there by Shear from Israel. But as Matt was saying, I really do think she oh. needs to be more aggressive. And a fair amount of swelling under the left eye of Kanchana Siri as well. Oh, digging body hooks there. I think she really wants that 10,000 buck. Yeah, there's a bonus for knockouts. Nice palm over the face in the clinch there. I think she might be able to take it here. She needs to continue with this ag aggressive pattern. Nice little short little elbow on the inside there. Transition from the punch. Oh, nice head control. There's Kunch in a series just merely surviving at this point. Trying to step in with her own lead jab. Just a few seconds left. 25 seconds left to go here. Nice catch there from Cheer. As Kanchana Asiri just ties her up. Trying to mitigate those punches. Nice block there from Cheer as she moves forward. I really like those punch flurries from Cheer. Yeah, and a very tired looking Kanchana Siri going back to the corner. We'll get to see some of the replays in just a moment. We are really running for it. Coming in fast and heavy with the hands. There's that big right hand coming in. This wobbling Kanchana Siri. You see how just her face in that look of anguish. Yeah, she looks very uncomfortable in that punching range. Turns her head a lot. It's a bit of a worrying sign there, if I must say so. So we'll see what happens here in the third round of Sheer Vertex taking on Kanchana Siri from Thailand. She looking ready for action. Nice kick battle here to start off the round. Tip, very tip for Tat starting off early here in the third round. Nice stabbing knees there from Sheer. Turns the hip over to stall the clinch. She's got to be careful about eating some of these kicks from Kunch in a series. I think it's, it comes from our kickboxing background of just absorbing the kicks rather than uh, blocking like in Muay Thai. A lot of times kickboxing athletes will just will try and block with their arms or will just try and walk through the kicks. Yeah, you can't block with your arms in Muay Thai. It's a very dangerous strategy to employ here. Oh, nice takedown there from Sheer. Rocking the confidence of Kanchana Siri. Oh, nice duck and taking the back as well. She is showing a lot of heart here in this fight. Oh, powerful kick to the low. He's really been taking Kanchana Siri apart here. Yeah, definitely dictating the fight. It's a foregone conclusion here. Here we'll go on to the final to face Nong Hong. Beautiful aggression there by Shi. She pushes forward with a big right elbow. Following up with a big plunge flurry. Rocking the head of Kanchana Siri. 
back and forth, back and forth, like a seesaw. One of those bobblehead dolls on a, you have on the inside of your car. Just waiting for the kick, trying to time the teeth there from Cheer. Oh, nice punch in the body as well. About 40 seconds to go. Kanchana Siri looking a bit desperate here. Nice replies there, taking out the lead leg. As soon as she takes something, she gives it back to Kanchana Siri. That's a few seconds left now. Oh, big hook there. I think that wobbled from Tanisiri. Big punch flurry there from Sheer. Pretty good performance. End of the third and final round. So I think it's fairly obvious on our unofficial scorecards who we think will be taking that fight. Some of the replays. Good kicking from Kanchanasiri, but here not necessarily blocking a lot, but this had more power and tenacity the Israeli athlete. And also those punches breaking the posture of Kanchanasiri as well. And also that dump there in the third round. It's gonna score fairly well. Nice defense. Go over to Mark Abbott. Ladies and gentlemen, after the completion of all three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored this bout 30 27. Sam Tibisip Jet. Sam Tibisip Jet. Let Sam Tibisip Jet. For the winner, in the black corner, Sheer ดีดวยครับเชียร์เฟเทชกับเข้ารอบชิงชนะเลิศของเฟเทชไฟท์โรดทูวันไทยแลนด์แล้วก็จะเจอกับนางหงเลี้ยงประเสริฐนะครับเ
Welcome back to Fairtex Fight, Moi Man Pan Extreme here at Lumpini Stadium in Bangkok, Thailand on Channel 7 HD. We now move to the semi-finals of the Fairtex Fight Road to One Thailand Tournament in the men's 68 kilogram category. Fairtex Fight Road to One Thailand Run 68 kilogram. Let's bring out the fighter in the black corner. 12 Panna Kiet Winai. Here we go with the 68 kilo semi-finals for the Road to One Season 2 tournament. Entering the ring now, we have Sip Song Panna Kiet Winai. So Sip Song Panna training out of Fairtex Training Center in Pattaya, Thailand. Took a number of years off of fighting as he was a trainer in Macau over in China, Hong Kong. Then came back maybe four months ago, had a warm up fight and went right into the tournament. A nice long, lengthy frame to him, Sip Song Pana. He's originally from Pattaya, Thailand. So we'll see how he does here. The 27 year old stands at 178 centimeters, 81 bouts to his record, 51 wins, 30 losses. We turn it over to Mark Abbott. In the red corner, let's bring out Purthai Pa Phnom Coming into the red corner is Purthai Pa Phnom The age of 20 stands taller than his opponent at 185 centimeters with a fight record of 70, 70, 77 fights, 60 wins, 15 losses, and two draws. It'll be interesting to see, having been taller than Sipsong Panar, whereas Sipsong Panar is usually taller than his opponents, especially at this weight. We have Putai in, his, in the qualifying fight to get here, fought Kendu Irving, who's very tall himself, but Putai just was able to get that clinch in and just drove in the knees against. Irving, we'll see how he fares against Sipsong Pana. Does he, does his final prayers for he goes to battle over three rounds here at Fairtex fight. We'll throw it over to Mark Abbott. This is a Muay Thai bout at 68 kilograms, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Namoy Neimum Dam fighting in the black corner. Namnak 68 kilograms, sung roy jetsipayat. Weighing in at 68 kilograms, standing 178 centimeters tall. Ma Jak Pratetai. From Thailand, this is Sip Song Pana Get Winner! And his opponent fighting in the red corner. Namna Hok Sip Pat Kilogram Sung Roy Pat Sip Ha. Weighing in at 68 kilograms, standing 185 centimeters tall. Ma Jak Pratetai. Also from Thailand, this is. And your referee, Sip Ekitada Pontu. Here we go with the tell the tip Pur Thai Po Phnom Pon versus Sip Song Panai Kiet We Nai. So you can see the obvious height advantage that Pur Thai has. And with a build like that, you. Most athletes that are tall and lanky like that are Macau fighters, clinching knee fighters, 
That's what happened with Kendu Irving in the Round one. qualifying fight. So you see Puitai is weight on the back foot. And Sipsang Panat. Are you aimed for that leg? A little bit of a slow start. Again, aiming for that lead leg. You can see Sipsang Panat with a classic shell guard there. Just keeping the hands nice and tight to his head. Just carefully jabbing out. Feeling their rhythm out here. A little bit slowly for a three round fight as our referee just tells them to pick up the pace a little bit. Just feeling out with that jab to hook. Sips on Panar. There's that ferocious left kick that he's shown us so many times here on Fairtex Fight. A bit of a trademark of Sips on Panar is that left kick. Whips it up. What a beautiful left kick again. Nice straight boxing there from Rutai. Trying to find his placement with his knees and his elbows. And it's always a bit hard when the knees are almost as long as the the opponent's kicks. Yeah. So that range management becomes a lot more difficult. Sipsong Pana getting ready to let out his weapons. There's that left kick. The question is, will it slow down Puitai? You see Puitai having his weight on his back foot. Ooh. Beautiful right knee to elbow there. There's that walking knee from Puitai. Trying to slap the hands down to bring that left knee up too. Some hard leather being thrown. Some good mitigation there from Sipson Panar as he turns that hip over as his opponent tries to walk forward. Just doesn't allow for him to fire anything off. And then peppers in that jab. Control there from Kultai. Trying to find the range for the knees. Good tape off there from Sitsong Panar. Again, the long knees coming in from Putai, but not a ton of sting behind them. End of round one. A bit of a slow round for a three round fight, but definitely interesting to watch. Very strategic from both fighters as Sipsong Panam was on the back foot. Putai was walking forward trying to utilize those knees. Pretty classic from such a tall opponent. So here in the replays, you can see those knees coming in, that knee to elbow there from Putai. Sipsong Panar putting up the long guard so he can throw that kick. Yeah, good short hands there from Sipsong Panar. Back into action for round two. Sipsong Pinar taking on Putai Poor Phnom Penh. Oh, big hands there from Putai as his leg got caught there by Sipsong Pinar. Yeah, good defense there from Sipsong Pinar. He was aiming for that leg. And there's a long knees from Putai. Very classic Moikau style. And you see it, 
Sipsong Pinad just stalling in the clinch. Oh, good left kick there. And great control from Sipsong Pinad in the clinch to just slow down the much taller opponent. Strong frame there from Putai. Yeah, short elbow so from Putai. Double up, double up on the left kick there. As Putai tried to take him down, but slapped some of those knees up over the back. Which I don't think so hard for him because he's so tall. <laughs> yeah, just coming over that block there, you see. And throwing some little left stabbing knees up there. We're seeing Puatai get into clinch so much more now. Usually, more cow fighters start off a bit slower and then will charge their way to victory. So doing that classic Moi cow walk, lifting the knees up, blocking any kicks that come his way. And I think we'll probably see the next four minutes of this fight of Puatai just walking him down and clinching him throwing his knees through again a knee to the backside the knees to the back aren't super powerful but just show a lot of domination and control nice kick from Sitong Panar as he brought that leg on the inside of the thigh to just disable any attack that Putai tried to throw there just look at the length of his legs coming over the top of that knee guard. <laughs> nice left kick to right kick there from Sipsong Pana. Sipsong Pana goading him on for a moment. And you see Putai just able to hang on to Sipsong Pana. It's always a hard fight fighting somebody so tall like that and lengthy. You know, that almost seems effortless for Putai to get into that clinch range. However, Sip Song Penong does a good job of mitigating those punches there using a good cross block. Yeah, some of them getting in still in great balance from Putai. What do you think Sipsong Penong could do to disable some of that forward clinching from Putai? Yeah, I think, to be honest, I think it's going to be a hard third round for him as Putai has gotten some momentum behind him. So if he had maybe chopped the legs from the get-go, he'd be doing a bit better, but I think this final round will be difficult for him. So third and final round here. There's a stalls from Sipsang Pina. But Putai still able to get in some cheeky knees. Just coming over the stalls. The long limbs able to angle in a bit better. I wouldn't be surprised if this sort of pattern that we're seeing here today is similar to what happens with uh, Smilla Sundell and Alicia Rodriguez next week at one championship. Smilla will be defending her straw weight Muay Thai belt against Alicia Rodriguez, a very, very accomplished Muay Thai fighter from Phuket Fight Club. Big rounding knee there. Oh, short elbow from Putai. Yeah, just trying to drag the head down of Sitsong Panot. Panah. He marches forward. 
Oh, straight right hand through, locking on, throwing that left knee up. Getting that knee over the guard of Sipsong Panar. Sipsong Panar still on the back foot, throwing that left kick up, doubling up with the right. Oh, here we are with the D-lock. Trying to choke Sipsong Panar. Yeah, and you can see Sipsong Panar getting a bit tired of it. Just this repeated pattern over and over. It can be very disheartening. Oh. His head getting into a dangerous position there. As you saw, Putai tried to take him down by tripping him from that leg behind his legs. Oh, nice left through there. Attempting the big swinging knee over the top of the guard again. Oh, good right kick there from Sipsang Pana. Nice. A lock on there from Sipsong Pana. Marching forward. Oh, locking on, putting that knee up. Yeah, good body lock that time from Sipsong Pana. Solid body kicks as well, but we're still seeing. Puatai walk in with those knees. Beautiful right kick there from Sitong Panar. Putting that leg on. Oh, ducking the punch of Puatai. That... So that is the end of the fight. Be interesting to see how this fight goes. So we'll go and have a look at the replays in just a second yeah I think on my unofficial scorecard I probably had the first round going to Sip Song Pana, the next two going the way of Pui Thai I am inclined to agree with you Matt but you know my crystal ball 100% correct about 22% of the time I think it's getting better every week. <laughs> yeah, a little better. Ladies and gentlemen, after the completion of all three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored this bout 29-28. For the winner, in the red corner, เพื่อไทยพร้อมพร้อมทั้งคารอบชิงชนะเลิศของมวยรอบเฟตเอ็กซ์ไฟท์โรดทูวันไทยแลนด์ทำรอบเราจะพักกันสักครู่กลับมาก
I am from Uzbekistan. Uh, I was try boxing in the main, but I stopped uh, the Muay Thai because I like more Muay Thai. I choose Muay Thai because my game is to become a champion. I am so excited and after I get belt, I am so happy and thank you so much for Ayahuasca. They have given me a chance to fight Ayahuasca. Uh, I want to say thank you so much for supporting me and uh, they have given me like, this chance. And uh, I am so happy and uh, thank you so much for everything. ท่านผู้ชมครับคู่นี้จะชกกันในรูปแบบมวยไทยพิกัด68กิโลกรัม3ยกยกละ3นาที This is a Muay Thai bout at 68 k g Scheduled for 3 3 minute rounds นักมวยในมุมดำ Fighting in the black corner น้ำหนัก68กิโลกรัมสูง180 Weighing in at 68 k g Standing 180 centimeters tall มาจากประเทศไทย From Thailand this is Nunja Thai Jit Manon! And his opponent fighting in the red corner. Namnak Hok Sip by Kilogram Sung Roy by Tip Sam. Weighing in at 68 kilograms, standing 183 centimeters tall. Madak Rahet Uzbekistan. From Uzbekistan, the Fairtex fight. Thai what's new? Four champion tournament winner. Who's here? TC Muay Thai. And your referee, Naibul Lert, Gail Pitak. So here we go with the tell the tip for our main event of the day. Who's there to say Muay Thai? Non to Thai, keep moving on. So TC is. Uzair, a former Thai Watsudu tournament winner. He definitely has that Uzbekistan style to him, Uzair. Very hard puncher. Southpaw as well, can be a little unorthodox. Oh, spinning back fist there from Uzair to open things up. He always comes in with a really high tempo as well. Mm -hmm. Can often frustrate his opponents. But high tempo and unorthodox attacks. Nantachai doing a good job of hitting him with those really, really wound up kicks. Yeah, is it? Nantachai needs to be careful of those hands. Uzair has knockout power. We've seen it here before. Take him to the body up the top. And again, just coming in hard and heavy with the hands, Uzair. Locking up there. Oh. Slapping the hand down, trying to take it with that rear. Nantachai just waiting to find his range with that kick. Oh, beautiful right kick there from the Thai athlete from Jip Mong Nong. Oh, again, scoring with the... Has he found Uzair's rhythm here? And I think he'll be trying to take out the power from that rear hand of Uzair. By just sitting back, kick, sit back, kick. If he times it, I mean, we've seen arms being broken before in Muay Thai from kicking on the arms. Yeah, Taiwan Chai broke David Kirit's arm not too long ago. Just Taiwan Chai just blasted out that kick and broke the arm. Oh, nice redirection there from Nanda Chai. To try just keeping a high guard there. Oh, stabbing knees there. This could be trouble for Uzair. Yeah, we've seen that Uzair is not that adept in the clinch. Definitely one of his weak points. Oh. Beautifully timed kick there from Nantachai. Definitely 
coming from a stadium <laughs> stadium style non to try I think he's got that kind of classic stadium stance about him oh skipping in with a nice rear elbow there from non to try yeah, I think oh a little bit of a low blow there <laughs> and the I don't know what it'd be yeah. saw the family yeah. jewels on non to try's foot Big first round. Yeah. Very big first round from Uzair and Nontachai there. Very exciting first round of our main event here. So we'll go and have a look at the replays in just a second. So here we are, that right hand of Uzair that he's so well known for. Oh, left hand, sorry. Yep. <laughs> so, mixing up my left and my right. He's uh, slipping in through the clinch with that, that hand, the short elbow from Nontachai. As Matt was saying before, his air's not that adept in the clinch, so he's got to be careful with going too forward and getting into that clinch range. What do you think Uzair could do to really take it to Nontachai? Yeah, he needs to stay at his punching range. He needs to make sure that he doesn't get wrapped up in the clinch. He also needs to make sure that he doesn't get blasted by some of these rear kicks as well. Round two. that kick coming in got to be careful of those spinning attacks as well and come out of nowhere oh. and you see Uzair opening up his mouth as well you see the green of his gum shield all the time he's definitely taking some damage from those kicks as well oh the spinning back fist <laughs> bit of tornado tornado action there just trying to time that left that right hook as want to try kicks bit of reddening on want to try his head there probably from some of those solid hands of Uzair oh again there's that right kick and Duzer trying to blast back with that left hand. I'm sure what Uzer's doing with his gum shield out. Um, Got to be careful of that. He might lose some teeth. Yeah, he keeps fiddling with it in his mouth. Beautiful right kick there from Nontachai. Just trying to time it as Uzer comes in. Oh, there's that spinning back fist again. So far, <laughs> the Kim Mong Nan athlete hasn't been caught by it. Just a minute left here in the second round. Oh, hard punch. Beautiful knee there from the Thai athlete. Nice long guard. Stabbing knees there from Nontachai. Yeah, he, ooh, ooh, racking him up there. That's where he wants him. And you see the look of pain on Uzair's face when those knees come in. He does not like them at all. Nice kick there from Nontachai. Nice long guard, mitigating ooh. some of those punches. Just times that kick so well as Uzair moves around with that right hook. Oh, nice knees there from Nontachai. Yeah, able to pull Uzair down easily. You can see Nontachai keeping that right hand nice and high. Worried about the rear hand of Uzair. Let's see Nontachai 
waving his hand up to the music, looking very confident with his performance there in the second round. So we'll go have a look at the replays. Nice kick exchanges from Nontatraya News there. There's that spinning back fist. Connects, but it doesn't rock Nontatraya. Bit of a slapping right hook there from Uzair. But as he throws that right hook, Nontachai tends to time the right kick straight into the midsection of Uzair. We saw in that second round, as soon as they got into the clinch and Nontachai threw those stabbing knees, Uzair was wincing in pain, so guessing, now only guessing from my crystal ball is that Nontachai might want to go back into that clinch range, throw those stabbing knees up again because there was definitely a sign of pain on Uzair's face Oh nice knee there, nice kick there from Nontachai Good block there from Uzair Stabbing knees. Yeah, almost bent over. There's my crystal ball. Yeah, Nontatai went was running in for the kill there. Slowed down a little bit. Oh, beautiful knee there from Nontatai. Oh, oh left knee. knee. Yeah. yeah, I think I think I've <laughs> oh, I think my uh, fortune telling is starting to pay off. Could I be a percentage above yours? <laughs> I don't know about that. Might be a pretty easy to get above 22% though. <laughs> oh, beautiful knee! I love that. And yeah, we're seeing Uzair's posture getting broken. And he, he's afraid of the knees. He, he, oh. He dropped, he's dropping his hands by his midsection. Nontachai just running in for the kill, goading him on. Oh, oh, this is not looking good for Uzair. Might be an early finish for him. He almost like turned his back there, looked up at the clock. Yeah, he's trying to protect himself. Almost spit out his gum shield as well. Oh, he's a tough customer, though. Yeah, he's very tough here. He's just trying to kill the clock here, but unless he's able to somehow knock out Nontachai, just don't see him winning this fight. <laughs> the referee breaking it, giving Uzera a brief respite. Yeah, and then... Yeah, yes. appropriate call off there from the referee. It was just one way traffic for Ananta time. And he will face the very tall Puatai in the final. That will definitely be a tall order for him. So we'll get to see some of the replays. And
ladies and gentlemen, in round number three, we have a winner by a technical knockout in the black corner, Nandachai Jit Manon! Recorrention, Kun Prem Hub CEO, Fairtex Fight, more bonus jack, Fairtex Equipment, Ning Moon เราหมดเวลาแล้วสำหรับช่อง 7AG นะครับอย่าลืมว่าเรามีอีกหนึ่งคู่ที่จะถ่ายทอดสดทางออนไลน์นะครับช่อง t e r r o Digital และช่อง f a i r t e x f i g h t งานในวันนี้จะเกิดขึ้นไม่ได้ถ้าขาดผู้สนับสนุนเหล่านี้ขอขอบคุณช่อง j e t h d t e r r o Entertainment f a i r t e x สนามมวยลุมพินี y o u t Sport Gear w e b e r ตาตุกแกและขอขอบคุณไทยวัสดุที่สนับสนุนมวยรอบ Road to One Season 2 Thailand From me Mark up with the team here at Fairtex Channel 7 HD Lumpini Stadium สวัสดีครับ